spread the table here, there is a certain part of human psyche that pays eternal tribute and places reverence, at the same time questioning whether they've lost their marbles entirely, to what are generally termed daredevils, stunt men at a pinch. To such a degree, I don't even need to tell you who is on the screen, even though that photo was taken 50 years ago. That man inside the iconic leather suit is still a well-known figure. Another no need to name, A-lister, synonymous with the term, a household name even today. Despite Harry dying 97 years ago. What about this chap? No idea. And some of my subscribers, good people, may remember a VI I did on Felix Tanner at the end of 2021. Australasia's most well-known daredevil of sorts. Like many in his profession, Tanner would not just confine himself to one trick for want of a term. At one point he starved himself, another became the first person to employ a parachute in Australia, before planes were even prevalent, edge of the spectrum, living off publicity, daredevils of all ages went from the next madcap scheme to the next, I enter into evidence, and Tanner's arc. During his time in New Zealand, Felix came up with a ludicrous scheme to circumvent the globe in that. Link below in the description and at the end on one of those bubbly things. Our main character was of the same mould, whilst being best known for the first man to go over Niagara in what resembled a sub more than the barrel. Bobby Leach, like the aforementioned characters, and I mean characters, was more than a one-trick pony. However, for the day, Niagara was the daredevil equivalent of Everest. And whilst I said he was the first man to go over in 1911 and live, let's face it, surviving is always a bonus and the only way it counted, he wasn't the first. That honour went to a woman a decade prior. One time school teacher Annie Edson Taylor took a more conventional approach in terms of craft. Taylor's 50 metre fall was cushioned by encasing herself in bed mattresses, testing her kit and the run-in on her pet cat two days prior. In terms of motivation, Taylor was somewhat an outlier in the field, having been left penniless by a scamming preacher, now aged 63. She was after the dosh that came with such an achievement. This fame proved fleeting and fickle. She died a pauper, aged 82, after her own manager ripped her off and plumbing the depths by stealing her main prop, that barrel. Unlike Taylor, the English-born leech came with a long CV of daring and bravado. Prior to his most famous plunge, he toured with the Barnum and Bailey Circus, working as a stuntman. At one point undertaking part of what were known as high dives, in modern vernacular, shallow dives. I'd happily opt to go over the falls first before jumping a hundred foot into what is all but a standard and change out of a grand backyard parapool. Another thing too is you look at the insanity of what was taking place in front of you in a dive of this nature. Sometimes the performers would also wear a special suit and set themselves alight just before jumping to add to the visual effect. And in a completely unrelated side track I discovered when googling, these travelling circuses also once featured the aptly named horse diving as well. I have discovered a much simpler way of making a horse dive, me putting 10 each way on them. Since leech is intertwined into Niagara folklore, and as you're about to find out, his association is not isolated to a single trip down the falls. At a stage of life, you would have thought his best days were way behind him, 53. Let's take a look at the falls and all who sailed on her, under her as well. In short, the nutters, past and present, are starting with the details.
until I did this video, I was under the belief that Niagara Falls was one body of water straddling the US-Canadian border. That S at the end of the word fall, as in plural, having escaped me. There are in fact three falls in close proximity. Horseshoe, American and Bridal Vale. Horseshoe on the Canadian side is by far the largest Both Leach and Taylor went over Horseshoe. No one has ever gone over American Falls and survived. And something often not discussed, it's always been a draw card as well for those wanting to end their lives. The odd sod mucking about sometimes end up in the drink by mistake, often drunk. The first person known to have gone over was Joseph Avery in 1853. His attempt was far from planned or deliberate. In that photo, he's hanging onto an outcrop for dear life. He and two mates had been pissing up and their boat capsized. One and two went over the American Falls. So you know what happened to them. Avery miraculously found himself on an outcrop where he remained for 18 hours till shore rescuers managed to get a boat out to him, which he got into only for that to capsize as well. Over he went as well. Needless to say what happened to him. Which leads me to indicate both US and Canadian authorities have always been dark on anyone taking their chances. Going over the falls has been banned for well over a hundred years. Regulations still don't prevent about a person a fortnight taking a dramatic exit out. Most of those go unreported in order not to put ideas in people's brains. The most notable of those look at me way to go outs was the 40 year old Ron Jeremy Twin, Kirk Jones. In 2003 a depressed and drunk Jones chose to exit this mortal coil in a dramatic fashion over horseshoe. Unaided i.e. in just the cows he was standing in. Only, to everyone's surprise, particularly his, he survived. Then fearing, framing this as a suicide bid gone wrong, would temper all the publicity he was now getting, ruin his Andy Warhol quote fame, Jones repolished his story as a serious attempt to be the first person to go over the falls unaided and survive, which incidentally he was. A story which was wafer thin considering he was found wearing jeans when authorities found him shivering on the US shoreline, still drunk. 14 years later, now all but forgotten, his only claim to fame in life being that date with destiny, he threw the dice again, got rid of the Levi's work duds and instead constructed himself a version of a Kiwi invention the very Zorb on your screen. For company, the 54 year old decided to take his 7 foot long a pet boa constrictor. How did number 2 go? For the Zorb and Misty the snake, rather well, they survived. Jones, well his body was discovered 6 weeks later. And back to Mr Bobby Leach, our main protagonist. By his early 50s, he'd retired from the circus, got hitched and had a daughter, setting up shop in Niagara Falls, where he ran a restaurant and a pool hall. But despite his commitments to the wife and child, running a couple of businesses as well, his testosterone was still pumping. Off he went again, becoming the fourth person to parachute off the steel-arched honeymoon bridge into the drink. Not that that satiated his adrenaline thirst. Nine years after Taylor's first and the last barrel ride, his plan was to be second. Leach would spend a year planning and practicing. 
building, testing and perfecting his 2.5 metre barrel come torpedo, come steel coffin. It had a small window by the way, a come porthole, for reasons that escaped me. He had also rigged a hammock, like arrangement, inside to ride it out. Another reason that escapes me. Then there was also more than one sub on the go. Oh yes, this is a subject that gives and gives. That's him posed beside the larger prototype in January 1911. These sub-tests in the water below Horseshoe were using the smaller model were themselves deaf defying On two occasions prior to July the 25th, 1911, Leech almost drowned. The last of those practice runs come close calls the month before the balloon went up. An event, 30,000 turned up, expecting the worst. You get the gist from the video how close people can get. As a prelude to him running through the rapids, a crowd warmer as such to Leech's near-death experience. The throngs also got to see high-wire trapeze artist Oscar Williams getting into difficulty and ending up into the drink too. Two drowned rats for the price of one. Big day out. With even a larger crowd on hand, over Robert Bobby Leach went at 3 o'clock July the 25th 1911. Reports indicate he was submerged for a disturbingly long time before his subby thing bobbed to the surface. His support team frantically raced to rescue him, and 20 long minutes later, the vessel was lassoed and dragged to shore. No one was even exactly sure if Leach was arrive or dead at that stage, so they banged on the outside, and to their relief, he banged back unscrewed the hatch to find he was in high spirits, if not somewhat worse for wear. His first of two requests was A, pain relief, B, a cigar. Leech had munted both knees and broken a jaw, suffered head trauma, requiring six months in hospital. In case you're wondering, Annie Taylor and her basic model Toyota Corolla just ended up with a bit of bark off her forehead. Wait, there's more. Leech's dalliances with the falls weren't over. He, his wife and the sub began touring the US, cashing in on his new found fame. But like Kirk Jones, his draw power began to wane. A second go was planned, and it was to be sponsored by a tyre company. They were going to construct a rubber version of his scrapped giant sub. Picture this in bondage gear. However, in July 1920, this bloke, fellow Englishman Charles Stevens, would put the skids under future attempts for good reason. That headline from New Zealand is literal, not hyperbole. When he arrived at Niagara with his barrel, Leach told him at least test the barrel out upstream, to which Stevens explained he had in the surf at his local beach at Bristol, UK. The blinkered Stephen had spent 11 years planning for this, a lifetime dabbling in death-defying acts, including working in a circus where he would baste himself in blood and then enter the lion's cage. Nothing was going to stop him. Looking into those uh, maniacal eyes, one going to the shop, the other coming out with the biscuits, would you think anything different? And Dashed was an apt headline. Highly accurate description. 
even if the papers at the time did leave out the gory details. That's for good reason. Inside Stephen's barrel for ballast was an anvil. He was tied to it. The only part of the body recovered was his right arm, still attached. Both the Canadian and US authorities were not amused. Further attempts were banned. Security upped. Not that this new rule deterred Leach, as this cutting from a New Zealand newspaper attests. At one point, he envisaged dropping his rubbery subbery from a plane straight into the drink to outwit authorities. You can't make shit like this up. And bear in mind, he was 66 at this point. It was back to Turin, and after 15 years saturating his home market, overseas he headed. First stop, the big lights of Auckland, and then off to Sydney. I mean, what could go wrong? After all, Leach was the embodiment of the term tough as nails, a man with massive gonads. A mere accident like slipping on an orange peel and busting a leg up would be a slight impediment to a man of this stature, one would think. That's not what happened though. The wound would become infected. A sepsis set in for a fearless man who had lived his life on the seat of his pants. An innocuous a scratching of the head final journey over the rapids of consciousness into the abyss of the beyond. Robert Bobby Leach's final resting place is in Hillsborough Cemetery, Auckland. I trust you enjoyed this little number. A bit of a hoot. Speaking of which, along the same veins, Australasian's very own stuntman, cum nutcase, the versatile Felix Tanner follows. Not trying to give too much away, at one stage he employed a guillotine as a stage prop. Since doing that video, I found an article on him when he was doing his township tours of New Zealand. Not only would his act result in woman fainting, hardy farming stock people were known on occasion to go outside and vomit all the fun of the fair. Great night's entertainment in the days when staunch meant just that. More than not getting upset, you were misgendered. Paul, don't go down those lines again. You know how much trouble it got you into with YouTube and those thin-skinned viewers. The ones not into the loss of limbs, decapitation, that sort of thing. Bye for now.